This is Brian Klein with Thunderhead Engineering. Uh, in this uh, short screen to cast, I will be showing you how to make uh, circular stairways in Pathfinder, which has been requested a few times. Um, unfortunately, to start out with, I'll just say that um, Pathfinder does not have a tool to make circular stairways, and the rotation uh, feature does not have a vertical translation function, but by combining a few tools, um, we can accomplish um, a circular stairway effect in Pathfinder. So let's get started. Uh, first thing that you want to do is draw your stair. Now in this case um, I'll make small stairs that are uh, triangular. One of the things to note here is that this length of the triangle should be the radius of your step, so of the, of the uh, rotation. So this is the axis of rotation in the center, uh, then the radius length out to the front edge, this is the leading edge of the step, and then the tread depth will be from the front point to the back point. Um, you'll see later how to make a little bit different shaped stair, they won't be triangles, uh, but this is a good starting method. The next thing to do is to rotate uh, this step down to horizontal. Now we will do the rotation translation with a copy. So in this case I'll make 20 copies um, with a base point in the center, that's our axis of rotation, out to here, and then by the stair depth. This creates the 20 uh, copies that we need. Um, in this particular instance, um, this we're going to have this stair go up and then exit um, basically straight off of this this step here. So these few steps we don't need. If you wanted to continue us around, if we would have done 21, we would have had a full 360 uh, degree step and we could have went you know, sort of up around and out the top. So just depending on how many, you create the number of steps to cover the angle essentially that you need to cover. So we'll just delete these three. Okay, so now if we look at this in 3D view, um, you'll see that it's just a um, plane of steps. So we need to start doing our vertical offset now. Um, this is a bit tedious, but I think you'll see how this works, and I'll probably um, fast forward a bit here through the video so that you won't have to sit here in real time watching me do this. But uh, I'll do the first here in normal time. Right-clicking the highlighted steps, you set the Z, and then in here we want to do a relative offset of our tread height, our step height. So in this case we'll say that it's 7 inches. Okay, and now all of these steps have been brought up by 7. I control click this step and do it again. 7 inches, relative, and okay. It's important that you do the relative as uh, absolute would drop everything back down to 7 inches off 0. So 7 inches, relative, and I'll just continue to do this until these are all offset. Okay, so now we have our steps rotated up. If we go to 3D view, we'll, um, we'll be able to see that spiral leading up to the top. Okay, so this bottom step, um, we'll say that this is at the zero at the floor height, so this would be the first step up from the floor. Um, you could make this be the first step up and have your floor below that. Um, and let's, let's do that now. So what I want to do is go to a top view. Um, I'm going to make the bottom step, the actual lower level, one step below here, and it will be uh, a rectangle. If I draw that now, since this step is also um, uh, is not at zero, so since I've elevated it, if I'd done, if I had have done this in the beginning, I would have cut out this piece. But now that it's raised up, um, I can grab a rectangular shape here and just snap it down to there and you'll see in the 3D view um, that it's at the same 
height as our lower step. Uh, I don't want that. I want this to be the first step up. So let's go back to 2D view. Um, I will pick you know, basically a control select all of these guys. And I will raise them all up relative seven inches. Now relative is important here. Absolute, we drop everything back down. Um, so let's now go to 3D. And we see where our first step is actually this top step right here, or the bottom step right there. So let's rotate this around, give a good look at it. Okay, so we basically have our staircase now, um, but we need to connect these up with steps. Um, an easy way to do this, uh, we'll just take a look here. Um, first thing that we'll do is we'll get our two-click stair tool and lock that in. And um, you can see here that I've set the width greater than the length of the edge. Um, we're going to be cutting this part out of the stair steps. Uh, we want the steps to start out here. So what we're going to do instead is um, set this to something smaller, let's say 100 centimeters. And take a look at that. That's too short. Let's do 200. You know, of course, when you're actually putting in the real dimensions here, this will look right. But now I have it. So uh, I can just start clicking step by step, and I'm connecting basically creating one step up level by level. Let me get here so I can see more of my steps. Pretty close. Okay. And um, go back in, double click this to get the sticky tool, and just click step by step up. And we'll rotate around again here to get the last step. Okay, so now we have our staircase going all the way up to the top. And let's go ahead and go back to selection mode. You can see that easily here. Now I want to trim up my stairs so that I get a nice arc here and I don't have these sharp tips on each stair. This is the actual stair width that I want. So a really easy way to do that is the split tool and just click, uh, let's rotate around here so I can see what I'm clicking on. There we go. Okay, and what we're gonna do is just click from point to point here and we'll be cutting off these tips. So let's click, click, and that does it. So I'm going to sticky this tool, so I'm going to do a few operations in a row here. You can see as I go up the color changes um, as I am cutting each step. Let's roll this around. Here we go. Okay. And off here. So sticky that tool again. If you don't see that color change, you missed the click. Now this is going to be our landing on our at our top level. We're going to actually add to this here. So we'll leave this alone for now. Uh, we can go back into top view, select these inner pieces that we don't need anymore and delete them. There we go. Now if we roll back into 3D view, we'll see a nice circular stairway leading up from this level up to the top level. Um, one thing to note here is that uh, if this went up a few floors, let's say, you can duplicate all of this now. So. If I wanted this to go to a landing and then lead up to another set, it's quite easy to do. Um, I'll show you that here in a moment. Um, in fact, that might be a good, good thing now. So we'll do this, and I'm going to take everything. Let's go to the top view. I want all of this. And uh, actually, let's undo that. I want to make 
make my, my top level. So let's take a look at this level here. It's at 3.02. So I'm going to set this to an absolute of 3.0. Let's say it's at 3 meters. 0. Okay. So that's our next level is at 3 meters. This last step will be slightly smaller, uh, shorter. Let's go to 3D view. Our stair should have disconnected because we dropped that height down a little bit. So we'll need to reconnect this top step to the edge. Make sure that it's all connected. Good. Um, okay, so now this is at 3 meters. We can see here in our Z bounds. And I want to make an extra floor at 3, which is what I have here. Uh, it usually does this automatically for you, which is nice. Let's go to our top view, and we know that this is our new step. So let's take the square floor tool, and we just need to intersect. We'll go the other way. It'll be easier. Start here at this corner point, and to there. Now I can take these two pieces and merge them into one piece, one floor, and a little edge here. We'll just drag it in and create a nice edge there. Okay, so now if we show hall, we should see uh, in 3D view our lower landing, our upper landing, and now um, I want to copy everything up a level except this landing. So we'll do that. Let's hide this for now. We'll go to a top view, select everything, and I want to copy this up one by three meters. And now, if we go back to 3D view, we see a new level here and then the next set going up. And if I show, I'm going to go ahead and just show all. We have our bottom. Okay. This is a nice, easy way. Um, if you want this to be straight to here, you can have a little edge here and cut this off if you like, but you just do that before you make your duplications. We'll leave it alone as it is now. Um, and everything should be connected. One way to check is to click this and say, um, just rotate here, and to say select connected components, and we want to do the entire graph. And if it highlights all the way to the bottom, we know we have stair connections all the way down. We'll drop our exit floor, or the exit down here on the ground floor, and we'll have um, people start at the top of the stairwell and exit at the bottom. So up here I'm going to add some occupants. I'll say 10 people. Okay, and I'll just kind of zoom out here and take a look. So these 10 people will descend the spiral staircase and exit at this door. So save now. Call this spiral stairs 3. And save. And then we'll run the simulation. Now, if there were any disconnects, it would say that your, your, uh, somebody can't find an exit, something like that. Uh, here we have our results. Let's snap this to the window. Okay. And we should see our people. go, descending the stairwell. Very nice. Okay, so that is the process, uh, simply. Um, the variables, of course, are going to be your step shape, your stair width, your stair height, your tread height, um, what you do with the landings or how the levels go um, up, the number of copies that you make, um, etc. So um, I recommend making shorter segments and duplicating that 
already built segment rotating and copying up. That would really help uh, speed things along. As you can see, I made a whole second set in one copy instead of having to continue the spiral up and duplicating over and over. So um, you can use the copy and move tools or rotate and move tools to quickly duplicate larger chunks of the staircase um, in your modeling work. So uh, I hope that helps with how to make spiral staircases in Pathfinder. Uh, please, if you have any questions, email um, support at thunderheadeng.com, and we'll be happy to help you. Thank you.